Hello and welcome to this TradeStation Easy Language tutorial from Markplex, tutorial 159. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is create an order ticket, which we're going to send to the market on a real time tick. And uh, when that order, we're going to be creating a uh, update event for that order. When the order is filled, we're then going to send a bracket order. And uh, then what we're going to do at a specific time, we're going to change the target level for that bracket order to a different level. And uh, that's going to be sent to the market at this specific time. So what, I, what I've done is recorded uh, a trade occurring, or in fact, some several trades occurring earlier and uh, or rather several order tickets being sent to the market earlier. This is all being done using market orders on a simulated chart. And so let's just look at that. Then what I'll do, I'll talk you through the code that I've created, which is which is as simple as I could make it, I think. And um, hopefully it will be something that you can play around with on a simulated environment and uh, try other things. Anyway, here here is the uh, the video that I recorded earlier. So I'm going to refresh the chart, and uh, as soon as I've done that, we will get the order ticket uh, appearing, being sent. So we can uh, confirm that if we wish to, and when we confirm it, then uh, the order gets filled. Then we get the uh, the bracket order appearing, and we can also send that. Now what's going to happen, I've just uh, missed out several bars while we're waiting for the time when the values change, but we've just got to that or we're getting very close to that time. It's occurs on the last tick of the bar that we can see forming at the moment. And you can see that the price of the target is, can't quite see it there, but uh, that value is going to go down um, as soon. Here we are. Here's the order replacement. So we need to say yes to that. And then as soon as we do that, you'll see that that line on the chart goes down to the new level. OK, so I've called the program underscore tutorial uh, 159 dash bracket. And the first thing I did is in the toolbox, I dragged uh, an order ticket on to the component tray, as you can see here. And this is um, pretty much um, as it comes apart from what I've done here, I've put in a symbol of a DBE in quotes, I've specified it as a stock. And then as far as the accounts concerned, I've made that an input in my program. And that is getting the value from there. I've said we want to buy 10 and uh, I've said at market and for the day. And then apart from that, there really isn't um, aren't many changes. So that is the order ticket. Then I also dragged from the toolbox to the component tray bracket order ticket. And again, the properties are pretty standard apart from the symbol. I've set in quotes as ADBE stock, uh, the account input, which is uh, one of my inputs containing the account number, or in fact, containing a word that gets the account number for this specific symbol that the program is applied to quantity 10. And then we're going to be uh, doing a sale. We've got a target type of limit and a protection type of stop market. And I've set these up as good till cancelled and uh, not made any other changes there. So they're very standard order tickets and bracket order tickets. But let's uh, look in more detail at what the program does. So the first thing that happens is we have one statement and this occurs on when get app info AI real time calc equals one. That means it's a real time tick. And what we do is we uh, send the order, order ticket one and we send that to the market and we're, we're storing that in my order. And if we were to go up into the variables, you see that we've got 
an order here, my order. Now we need to set up as part of this uh, a order update event. So we need some syntax for that. So the way to know what the syntax is, is if you go to dictionary and search here for order, And then in the uh, order, we find uh, tsdata.trading.order. And uh, what we're looking for is um, an order update. So we can click on that. And uh, then we should be able to see what the syntax is gonna look like. So if you can see here, that uh, we've got um, the object sender and the order update event args. That's going to be in in the code. Let's just uh, go up here, show you briefly the update event. So that is what we're calling my order updated. You can see here uh, order sender and then order update events args. And then the actual syntax for the thing that we're putting just when we send the order is here, my order dot, uh, dot updated plus equals my order underscore updated. And if we just go back to where we're sending the order, which uh, is in this one statement, you can see here that we've got some syntax, which is um, similar to that apart from the naming. Okay, so we send, uh, we, we, we are aware when uh, our order is updated and uh, we create the event that I just showed you, which is uh, here. And uh, what we're doing here is we want to know when our order is updated and filled. It's filled being uh, specifically what we need to know. So we have, uh, we say my, if my order dot state is equal to order state dot filled, in other words, the order is filled. And uh, if you don't know this syntax, you can always go to tools, options, and then uh, set up uh, enable autocomplete, which ordinarily is, is uh, a very slow, facility but are useful sometimes I find and uh, what we do then when it is filled we we want to set the uh, the price for our bracket order ticket which we set down here and we get that from the average filled price of my order so uh, we find that using my order dot average filled price and we say plus 10 and minus 10 so we've now got those values for the bracket order and then having done that we send the bracket order to the market and uh, we store the result of that in bracket components. Now bracket components, as you'll see here, is an orders with an S uh, variable. In other words, it contains several orders. And as we know, in this case, that's a limit order and a stop order, stop market order. So we need to, to find some way of going through those components, those orders, finding uh, which type they are, and then setting the, uh, the results into a specific order, which we're gonna use in a second. So we say, for example, if bracket uh, comp.type is equal to order type dot limit, then we store uh, the underscore bracket comp we're going through incidentally the values uh, of the components and we're setting each value um, to bracket comp uh, using this counter. So we're saying if, uh, if it's a limit order, then we can store the bracket comp into this new variable here, bracket order, order target, which again is set up at the top here as an order, as is bracket order STP. And uh, if it is stock market, then we set up uh, bracket order STP equals the bracket comp. And uh, as I say, we're gonna use that in a few moments. So we've now got the order ticket, we've got the bracket order ticket, 
and um, uh, we just saw those on the chart and how that um, target went down and the reason that happened was because at a certain time which I've just set arbitrarily here uh, I've said at a date a time on the last tick of the bar and for a real time bar what we're going to do is replace a ticket so what I do is I create a replace order ticket again that is a variable defined here at the top in the, in the variables so I create one of those and we're just going to be doing this for the target so I'm setting it as uh, a limit order type and I'm saying if the bracket order type is not equal to null if it is null you'll get an error for example if you were to take out the uh, the real time thing or if the date is in the past you'd get an error so what we're doing is we're saying if it's not null then we're going to just uh, update the limit price and we're going to do that we're going to take the price of bracket order target which we just stored in the at the pre in the previous step we're going to take that value that limit price oops okay we're just uh, setting up a new order here the market has just opened so naturally got a real time tick so if I just click yes there and then we'll, we'll see we've got our bracket order and I'm just gonna click yes to confirm that so you can see we've got some some new orders appearing on the chart there so okay let's go back to the uh, the program so we're finding out the uh, the limit price of the existing bracket order ticket we're adjusting that by five and then we're replacing the ticket so we take the uh, the bracket uh, order ticket which is the existing ticket and we're replacing it dot replace with this new ticket replace order target ticket target ticket and that is the one that has had the uh, the price changed and uh, if we uh, as you saw in the previous example and uh, maybe um, probably going to take a little bit of time to get to uh, anyway um, we'll we'll just uh, use the the previous example but um, that changed the target price I think that is everything um, please if you spot a bug or error etc let me know and if you are interested in this sort of material, then please uh, join the Markplex email list. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the logo in the middle of the screen in a few moments. And uh, if this video is useful, please click the like. Thank you very much. Oh, and I should uh, I should just mention um, that this program, if, for example, you were to refresh the screen, then uh, what you're going to find is that the order is going to be sent again. It doesn't have any uh, checks to make sure that the uh, the order is is not already uh, present. Or uh, I say it said again, I've got this thing to confirm, but if I were to turn that off or click uh, yes, and you'll see that uh, we get another order and another bracket order. So uh, pay attention to that. And of course, uh, use this in a simulated environment only.